Hey everyone, welcome back to Go Local Live. I'm Ava Gaudet, and up next in the Navigate Credit Union Broadcast Center, I have this extremely talented young lady. She is originally from Providence, based here in Providence, and she's a singer, songwriter, actress. Um, she has already established such an amazing career for herself. She just graduated high school. She's like way ahead of the game. Um, and I'm so excited to talk to you today. This is Emmeline. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, Emmeline, talk to me a little bit about how you got started because you got started at such a young age, um, yeah. acting at a super young age and songwriting. Uh, it said that you wrote your first song in the second grade, which yes. I love. <laughs> I, I can't imagine. What was the, uh, what was the song? Like, do you remember what? you would write about as a second yeah, grade songwriter? Okay. So I remember my <laughs> first song, um, so I started doing shows at Trinity Rep and mm -hmm. they would give us little recorders so that we could memorize all the Christmas Carol songs that we would learn. <laughs> right, right. Um, and I started recording myself and I would have these ideas um, at night and one of my best friends had moved to Paris, or Lyon actually, um, and I was so sad, I felt like so much loss that I started writing about how I missed her and how I lost this friend. Um, and I found the piece of paper with like all those lyrics recently. Oh my god! Yeah. That's um, so that was my actual first song. And then um, I had a band here when I was in third grade. Um, we had someone on the buckets. I love it. Someone on. I played guitar, <laughs> and my other friend played guitar. So, um, and I still use those songs today. Like I go through those and like edit them, and um, it's crazy. Yeah. Like how how catchy uh, the third grade songs I wrote were, and I don't know. <laughs> that you know? is so cool. It's, I mean, it's yeah. obviously like it was in you, you know, yeah. you, were all, you were already And especially inspired. like being a child, sometimes like if you're just naturally creative, things were really simple in a weird way. Yeah. Um, so like my natural pop things that now I kind of have to dig harder to find and like to create with other songwriters that I'm co collaborating with, um, it really just came so simply like as a child. Um, I, I think I yeah. agree with that. It's as a as a kid, you you kind of uh, have the ability to play. I mean, like that's what you mm -hmm. do when you're a kid, right? And so it's it's a lot freer. You're kind of more in tune with your emotions. And then yeah. as you get older, and you have to do schoolwork, and then you have to get a life's job. Life's more complicated. Life gets in the way. Writing yeah. about life is more complicated. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So second grade, uh, second grade, third grade, you're already playing guitar. Did you? Uh, take lessons? Was that something that was sort of like parent influence or were um, you like, hey, I want to play that thing? I'm, I'm very <laughs> lucky that my parents really gave me the opportunity to try everything that um, I had ever dreamed of becoming. Um, mm -hmm. I went through like a horseback rider phase. I went through, <laughs> I did a lot. I played soccer, um, but when I got on stage at nine years old, um, I knew like this is exactly where I want to be. I started um, at All Children's Theater in Providence. Uh -huh. I think it's now in Burlington. Um, and I was Annie and Annie during that show. And um, yeah, that is really like how I knew I was never going to be doing anything else besides <laughs> like, being on stage, being in the spotlight, like sharing my voice. That's amazing. Yeah. I love I love <laughs> uh, the people that I have spoken to doing this job here at Go Local Live. Uh, it's amazing how many of them say that they got their start in a Christmas Carol at yes, Trinity Rep. Yes. So shout out to Trinity Rep. Shout out to Trinity Rep. You <laughs> give kids this opportunity, and you know this may be their first time on a stage, and it's something that they love to do. So yeah, and shout out to the parents of the kids <laughs> at Trinity Rep. Exactly, but Trinity was actually a really cool thing for you because you went back a number of times throughout you you know your school age. Right. Um, playing different roles in different shows and recently, I think in 2016, you did a role and you had like a leading a leading role in it. So talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, I was cast in Appropriate, um, the show that Trinity put on, um, directed by Brian Murtis. And that show was one of the most complicated shows I've ever been in. Um, and I, like, I learned a lot about um, literature, I think. Mm -hmm. That was one of my favorite um, scripts I've ever read. And, and every single show, I would like discover something new within it. Um, it was an interesting process. Um, Brian would give us these like sort of activities um, <laughs> or you know he would give us different prompts and I've always heard he's a very interesting director but I didn't really like understand it until it was I was there. Um, he would give us like something and I wouldn't understand at all where it would be going and then like at the end of what, what one of the things would be like I would um, totally it would come back to the point like for example, um, <laughs> one of the times I had this very intimate scene with um, another character named River, and he was like, okay, here's what we're gonna do. Um, 
we're gonna take away everything in this room. So he like took out all the chairs, all the, everything, turned the lights off. He's, we, we like had just read the scene. He made us go into this room and like learn all the lines in like an hour. So we're freaking out. Um, <laughs> and he puts like candles in the room. Wow. And he doesn't let us see it, but he sets up this like magical like vibe and, and he makes us like walk into it. And, and this sort of evolved into the choreo... It's, he, he directs sort of like a choreographer. Hmm. Um, it, so that's why I'm saying choreography. But like yeah, it, it yeah. kind of evolved into the direction of the actual show. But he had us walk in, and we had like the most emotional scene um, from like his setup. And um, we didn't even talk about the scene really going into it, but we both ended up like sobbing. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it was um, a really, really interesting. And, I, and I, it wasn't like... It was pressure, and, but more of like a... Um, discover yourself pressure to like right. not do well just like to do well in a different um prompt i guess i don't know if that makes sense yeah definitely <laughs> it's, it's it was it was pressure to sort of get the most out of yourself as an actor like more yeah. like a real actor and i don't i only mean that that you're so young but you're in this professional environment mm -hmm. i mean you're acting with professionals and company totally. members who have literally been doing this for longer than you've been alive. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm yeah. sure it was a lot of um, of good pressure yeah, to, totally. to rise to the occasion. Yeah. And you got your equity card. Yes, I that. did. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great. That's a, it's such a, a professional, you know, achievement to get into your unions, you Thank know, get you. your unions. Yes. So here you are. I'm really proud of equity and everything that equity stands for. Yeah. Too, yeah. So you just recently graduated high school. You have already made a move out to LA yes. to pursue this as your career. Talk to us a little bit about the decision that you made um, to, to go there and maybe not New York or why, why you specifically targeted LA as the place you wanted to be. Um, so I, from a young age and pretty much up since a year ago, always imagined myself in New York. Um, <laughs> Um, I saw myself as a Broadway actress, um, but then, like, within the past year, I, I sort of realized that, like, everyone who I've dreamed of working with um, in terms of songwriting and in terms of film, which I'm now um, focusing on mm -hmm. even more so than theater, um, is in L.A., and um, it's kind of like the creative capital. Uh, and I, I, I absolutely know that I kind of made the right decision when I visited there in April with my mom. Um, it's exactly where I'm meant to be. <laughs> That's so, great. Yeah, it's so exciting. To decide, like the decision to move there, um, I had had a few really close, um, sort of like almost breaks with some big directors. Um, and it was always something that wasn't based on my talent that um, made all of these roles fall through. Like mm. there was a snowstorm and I was supposed to meet with David Russell. <laughs> and, and, all these times he got canceled, canceled, canceled. He's like, I don't like the snow. We're going with the other girl in LA. It was like me against her. Oh man! And I'm like, <laughs> I have to be there because yeah. I couldn't control the force that was right. causing me not to get the role. Um, so now, you know, being there, it feels like there's nothing standing in the way. Oh, it's amazing! Yeah. So you're acting. You've worked now on a couple of independent films. Um, you're getting opportunities. <laughs> uh, you're you're setting up some meetings to get a team of right. agents, managers, uh, people that you're working with. Yeah. So are you, um, that's sort of the acting side of things. So musically, uh, what have you been working on? I know that you released a single last year. Yes. Um, awesome music video. You, you should check it out on her website. Uh, and your songwriting thing is great. I mean, at 16 years old, you charted on the top 100 charts on yes. iTunes. So you're already, <laughs> you know, you're, you're doing it yourself. I mean, I think this is sort of, yeah. This day and age, yeah, it's totally like DIY. This day and age. You put stuff on the internet. You put out your own stuff. Mm -hmm. So, talk to us a little bit about where you stand with your songwriting, and now that you're in LA. Yeah. So, um, well, I did. I, I charted basically because of the internet, because I was posting on Vine, and I had that network of friends who are now basically my friends out there. Mm -hmm. um, so, through the social media, I have met all those friends, um, and and now are my total support system, and I've collaborated with a lot of them. My first collaboration was with the band Time Flies, mm -hmm. um, and I worked with Rob, and uh, we wrote this song, which now I can't even talk about like where exactly it is because nothing's like official, <laughs> but um, it's sort of like floating between different people, and um, there's a lot of like uncertainty as in like what exactly is going to happen with a lot of the work. But right now, like for the past few months since I basically booked it out there, yeah, after high school. Um, it's been like curating and curating, and I think 2018 is the year to really like 
release that and, and have it, you know, all pay off. Sure. So I'm excited to actually have people here, like what I've been working on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. Sometimes it's so hard because you're like, oh man, I've been doing this amazing stuff in the studio, but no right. one's heard it yet. And you're like, <laughs> I know. it's all bottled Instagram, up. Instagram, I, I, I do post some like sneak peeks. Okay, and stuff, cool. So check it out there, but you know. We should talk about that's that another real more. thing. <laughs> yeah, uh, like the social media thing yeah. right now, it's, it's really important for a lot of artists. Totally. Um, you know, you've definitely. Uh, made some great connections already just from your Instagram account and yeah. <laughs> so talk to us a little bit about that because I think it's really cool that a lot of the people that you've connected with in LA are kind of influencers on social media and how is that vibe right now for you? Mm, so I mean I I sort of didn't really I, I was nervous almost like meeting some of the people out there <laughs> who, I, who I do like really idolize but yeah. like um, they're so much more real than like I totally imagined because <laughs> being in Rhode Island, you don't really like see famous people on the street or like it was yeah, so right. it was so <laughs> like not real to me. But um, I mean like Kira Kasserin, B Miller, um, Cole Plante, like they've sort of been like in my circle, and those are you know they just like we lift each other up and we understand that like it's we're all in the same boat. Yeah. Um, so it's you know and and. And, and what's great about the people that I've met there is it's not really about um, these people in particular. It's not really about the numbers. Mm -hmm. I'm really lucky to have found a friend group that like you don't feel that sort of gets in the way. Whereas I was I was you know that sort of took a toll on my self esteem for a while. Like mm -hmm. comparing myself to what my social media is, what likes are, and especially like in high school and middle school. Like I think girls in particular do that a lot, um, which is upsetting. And yeah. um, and, and I'm really, really happy to have found friends who sort of lift each other up outside of social media, um, and, and we recognize that that's important. That's, that's awesome, because it is a challenge. It's, you can't deny the fact that having numbers on social media actually matters yes, these days. it's affected the industry It's affected so the industry, I mean, directly. With you, you talk about acting roles in TV and film, and they literally look at how many followers you mm -hmm. have on on Twitter and Instagram, and that's how they base who they decide to cast. Right. So in some ways, it is very important, but in other ways, if you start doing things that aren't genuine to who you are, you kind of go down this path of just like meaningless followers, and, exactly. and that's definitely not who you are as an artist. Well, thank you. So. Yeah, and, and that is one thing that I've learned to hold on to because um, it's, someone said this to me, like in LA, sometimes people will either say that you have to be so yourself that no one would ever even try to mess with your vibe or mess with who you are or you sort of have to be this canvas that like that people in the industry will like mm. try to make mold you mold you, yes, into, mold like, you yeah. into what they want you to be and I've seen it so many times like I've, I've actually had a few contracts like offered to me production deals and etc and um, and and when they didn't feel so right when it felt more like oh I feel that this person is trying to make me into this person that I'm not mm -hmm. um, you know they end up saying oh well you're not gonna make it because of this um, well you know I realize that oh, that's not the type of person that you want to be with because you always want to find the person that like understands that what you are is so important that like you, they should be investing in who you are as a person and um, and you know, and keeping those friends that I was talking about, and, yeah. and keeping family, and um, that's really like all it is to hold on and like have the strength, <laughs> I think, because it's so like up and down, and I, I've only been there for such a short amount of time. Yeah. So obviously, I'm still figuring stuff out, but it is um, it's it's definitely challenging to be around other people who are so driven, and it can get a little, you know. Uh, claws out. Yeah, because you, you've been in LA. Girl. I have. Yeah. yeah, I get it, and and. You are fortunate because you are actually very extremely talented, but you've been doing it for so long that yeah. you do have a sense of who you are as, a, as an artist that's extremely important to keep track yeah. of. Uh, I think you're going to be just fine. <laughs> if that's my, uh, that's good. <laughs> you heard it here first. I think you're going to be just fine. Um, <laughs> so you're holding this guitar. Yes, it is not a prop. It We're actually going to do a performance. It's my dad's guitar. Oh, is it? Yeah. I love it. My dad's guitar has made a couple of appearances really? here. Yeah, I, I, I borrowed my dad's guitar for oh, other gosh. artists. So <laughs> I love it. Shout out to our dads. Right. We're doing shout a lot out. of shout outs. <laughs> so uh, you're going to perform a song for us. Tell us a little bit about the song. What's okay, about. so this song I thought it would be appropriate because it's been almost a year since the Women's March is, mm. um, and I did perform at the Boston one last January, what was it, January 17th maybe? Um, yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> early January, but um, 
this song is sort of like my confidence, co like my confidence song, and yes, yeah, I, I listen to it a lot. So I love this. Perfect. Well, <laughs> I I'm gonna myself up. Yeah, you? there you go. Power to women. Where we've talked about that a number of times already on my show today. So I love it. I love okay. starting off 2018 with no girls. women empowerment. Uh, Emma Line is going to perform for us. I am going to scooch out of frame to give you a little space. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Let me take it over here. All right, girl, whenever you're ready. Thank you. <laughs>
though. An extra so well. talent <laughs> is playing the guitar with long fingernails. Emmeline, that was absolutely amazing. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you for having me. Emmeline, uh, what is the website? Emmeline? Official. Official. E -M -E -L -I -N -E. Go. Yeah, and that's my Instagram too. Stay in touch with her. She is going to be a star. I'm, I'm saying it right now. Thank you so much Thank for being you. here. Thank You're you. fantastic. Uh, I'm going to take a quick break. We're going to get set up for my next guest. Stick around. <laughs>